Hello and welcome to Capital Market Live on Channels Television. I'm Ladi Williams. First off, let's take a look at what happened uh, with uh, other markets, the global markets uh, this week. We see European stock markets close higher Friday with the stocks uh, 600 logging a gain of about 0.53% on Friday. Its fourth consecutive positive session was sort of DAX, that was up 0.53%. In London, the FTSE uh, closed up 0.36%, while the CAC index logged a 0.52% advance. Asia-Pacific markets were largely up on Friday following the moves of Wall Street as the U.S. producer price index signaled further signs of cooling inflation. And in the U.S., it's a different story for Friday's close. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell on Friday but notched a positive week as investors assessed the weak retail sales reports to dented enthusiasm rather stronger than expected starts to corporate earnings. And for analysis now, we have Ulumide, additional financial market analyst, joining me via Zoom. Great to have you on the show, Ulumide. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ladi. Uh, happy weekend. Happy weekend. Well, it, it looks like a, a better than expected bank earning in the U.S. didn't boost markets for green clothes. Yeah, but I, I think if you, if you look at the uh, latest uh, earning result from J.P. Morgan, uh, they brought in 12 point, uh, Four billion dollars in Q1, and they made a projection of bringing in 81 billion dollars. That's one of the highest record ever from a bank. That tells you that uh, the tier one banks, because of their uh, access to cheaper cash, they have been able to print numbers. But that has not um, shown with the contagion around regional banks. You call that uh, Silver uh, Silicon Valley uh, Bank and uh, Signature Bank went under because of. Uh, liquidity issues and uh, you know on, on, on their, book, their book shows that uh, um, u.s banks have uh, losses of about 660 billion and that's because of the hawkish uh, um, narrative of the uh, u.s fed which had really affected uh, the bond market but having said that i, I think we also need to look at uh, the uh, the market on a lo uh, longer uh, broad spectrum uh, the door for example has not changed four straight uh, weeks of gain and um, the Nasdaq and S&P has not changed positivity around uh, four, gain, uh, four weeks of gains out of five. So that really tells you that uh, the U.S. stock is uh, rallying on all cylinders. You know, with the results uh, came in um, a bit disappointing, and that was because um, Americans spent less on energy, and that showed uh, with the inflation rates uh, moderating. Uh, but I, I think if you look at Friday's uh, results, uh, Friday's uh, uh, market trading results, you, you could notice that why the uh, the Dow had uh, the New York Stock Exchange had uh, moderated uh, moderated was because of United Health. The operational cost around uh, drugs like diabetes uh, was scaled up, and also the fact that Boeing um, will have some delays uh, in delivering their planes. So the stock was down five percent. But it, I mean, it's been a decent week for American stocks. Uh, what are you expecting for next week? Uh, next week, yeah, we're expecting results from um, Goodman Sachs and uh, Morgan Stanley on Tuesday. That will give us direction on how uh, these uh, super giants investment banking have been able to handle uh, their books. You know, you call credit went under and uh, uh, UPS had to acquire it. So Americans will be really looking at how their banks really performed in that area. All eyes on the banks uh, in the U.S. But let's uh, bring it home um, right here. We'll see the local boss again close down for the week, about 2.1% uh, in the holiday um, shortened week. It seems um, profit-taking is still continuing in the local boss. Yeah, you're right, uh, right, uh, right. Because if you look at um, the NST Texas stocks, for example, particularly Etel, it happens to be the most valuable stock, has been down uh, more than 20% this month. And that's partly because we've seen profit taking and also the fact that foreign investors are exist, existing in the market through these stocks. You know, Ether is listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange and the United Kingdom Exchange, uh, United Kingdom, uh, London Stock Exchange, so they could really swap it easily. And also, we, we are seeing the fact that consumer stocks also uh, suffered heavily. You look at Friday, uh, Friday's trading session, you saw Cash be uh, posting near uh, uh, maximum sell offs. And that was after their dividend, uh, uh, dividend declaration. So it tells you pretty much that investors are really taking on uh, profit taking. But I think one of the interesting things we need to see in the market in Nigeria Stock Exchange is uh, Transcorp uh, reports that uh, uh, 
the popular business magnet Mr. Femme Toto that acquired five, uh, over 5% five and made him the second highest shareholder. He did push the stock to really high. And the stock present is trading at 169 uh, copper and is already at really high. So uh, that has really created some exc excitement and buzz across uh, the penny stock. So uh, that's a good sign. And uh, also, results from GSK Nigeria showed a uh, uh, profit appreciation of more than 774 million. Uh, but I think the big, the, the biggest one this week was GT Bank. You know, uh, despite their result came, coming a bit late yesterday, uh, we saw that. Uh, their yeah, net income moderated slightly uh, to 114 billion and naira in 2022, compared to what they had uh, of 221.5 billion in 2021. And that was partly because of uh, they had a repayment in Ghana uh, sovereign security. You no, know, Ghana is about 40 steps. And definitely, uh, the bank set aside about 35.6 billion uh, naira. But you know, uh, good thing about the bank is that uh, they still were able to reward their shareholders uh, to a couple of per share. So the total they run in 2022 is 3.9 billion. So I think uh, it's interesting to see how uh, investors will take this news in the coming week. All right. We'll definitely be watching out for all of that. Thank you so much, uh, Lumide, additional financial market analyst. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. And uh, earlier this week, we had the first Capital Market Committee meeting in 2023. During the meeting, issues bordering on implementation of the revised Capital Market Master Plan, implementation of the FinTech Roadmap and Commodities Trading Ecosystem Roadmap, as well as other salient matters uh, relating to the capital market and the economy were discussed. Well, joining me now is Mr. Aki Akiridulali, Managing Director, Lagos Futures and Commodities Exchange, joining me right here in the studio. Great to have you. Uh, thank you very much. It's Lagos Commodities and Futures Exchange. Lagos Commodities and Futures Exchange. Fantastic. So, yeah. uh, is the first um, meeting, you know, for the year. And looking at, you know, the past meetings, the issue on ground, on ground now is that capital market, you know, master plan. You know, for you, I know you were at the meeting. What were the key takeaways? I think the key takeaways um, are the CMC um, had to do more with them, the regulatory framework. You know, we're very happy that the ISB has gone through the third reading. The Senate has um, approved it, and it's been sent to the president for accent. And um, we're waiting patiently because this is going to be a game changer for the capital markets and for Nigeria's economy as a whole. Uh, everybody knows globally that um, any economy that you want to drive, you must drive it through the capital markets. And for you to have um, a structured um, legal framework and a regulatory framework, that ISB needs to be in place. And if that ISB is in place, it means that the capital market can now start playing a major role in infrastructure finance, in housing finance, in commodities and trading, and to be able to grow that um, ecosystem into a very big ecosystem. The capital market in Nigeria has a capacity to actually support uh, off-budget uh, uh, requirements of Nigeria in infrastructure and so many things. So the ISB is something that's needed, and the president should please, if they can, put pen to it so that we can use it to start the ecosystem. Those are one of the key things that was at, um, at the CMC. The other issue that is at, at the CMC was the issue of the IST. You know, uh, in January, uh, the Supreme Court um, ruled that um, um, the IST now should be able to adjudicate over capital market issues, which is a positive sign. It means that the turnaround time for issues when it comes to conflict resolution and um, arbitration will come faster in the ecosystem. Two, then um, well, the other parts of it had to do with um, fintechs also. We have some um, newly registered um, fintech. Um, uh, they, no, they are going to go into um, regulation now by SEC. We have um, two uh, broker, digital brokers. Uh, there. We have two crowdfunding institutions coming up. Then there's a robo advisor too. You know, and that just goes into tandem with the fact that the new ISB, you know, the last one was 2007. We're talking about 16 years. And over the last 16 years, there's been a lot of evolution globally everywhere. We've seen cryptocurrencies coming up. We've seen so many other things coming up. We've seen fintechs coming into play and all that. So I think the ISB being updated is going to support our economy and the ecosystem for us to participate. Those are one of the few things that them came up there, apart from the commodities ecosystem too. Yes. Uh, and looking at that, you know, fintech, you know, roadmap. We've been talking about how we want to bring in, you know, Gen Zs into trading, you know, attract them, you know, into these markets. What's what does the roadmap look like for the fintech? You see, the first thing that uh, you need to do for any um, ecosystem is regulation and the framework, the legal framework. 
What SEC is trying to do initially in this particular ecosystem is first of all, how do we regulate the ecosystem? How do we make sure that investors are protected in that um, ecosystem? How do you pre prevent systemic risks that could happen anywhere in the world in the ecosystem? And those are being put in place. And the ISB is going to support SEC in such a way that things that look like multi-layer schemes, Ponzi schemes, that some people are using fintech instruments to perpetuate now, SEC will be on top of it. I will be able to regulate it uh, better. Having done that, then you now have the incubators where they, they've created a small space for, to incubate these companies that they're onboarding for one year to assess them. After they are assessed for one year, they will be now be allowed to come and start participating in the ecosystem, in the capital markets. Quite interesting. And obviously, we've seen, um, you know, proponents of cryptocurrencies, you know, talk about, you know, bringing Bitcoin, you know, into most of these markets. Is there a possibility of that happening in Nigeria? You see, uh, Nigeria is a very, very conservative country when it comes to investments. And we have very, very savvy investors in Nigeria that look at how and what they're putting their money into. But the major issue is the systemic risk to which, you know, you see one single bad trade in a particular um, institution that's very large and you now have an existential um, threat that could consume the whole um, of the markets. So, yes, it will come up. But I think the way SEC is going about it, first of all, you're going to be there in, a, in an incubation for like one year. to assess you, study you, look at how structured what you're trying to do is, then you'll not be embodied into the capital marketing. So I think with time, what I mean with time is maybe with a little while, after studying it, SEC will give them... Um, more space to be able to start participating fully in the capital markets. And, and looking at um, most of the you know, discussions you know, had you know, at the meeting um, right now, looking at about uh, 10 years compared to where we are you know, right now, what kind of improvements do you think we've seen in the capital market? I'm, I'm not, I'm going to give, do 10 years. I'm going to do three years. Three, three years. Three years. Okay. You see, one of the things that um, the director general of SEC has done with his team, the executive commissioners, is that they've been able to put the capital market on the front burner of Nigeria. And that is what other countries are doing. If you look at what the capital market has done in the last four years, the capital market has financed infrastructure, financed um, so many other things um, in the market. It's high time now that the capital market will be brought to the forefront with the ISB in place now to finance housing in Nigeria, to finance commodities trading, in Nigeria to finance large heavy equipment in Nigeria and all these are things that SEC is putting in place with the ISB to make sure that we can participate effectively well. So sooner than 10 years from now, I see a very vibrant market whereby the capital markets, don't forget that the capital market is almost like a reflection of a private sector, controlling about almost 60% of our economy and contributing to it, creating capital to it, mobilizing capital, mobilizing savings to be able to push Nigeria to the next level so that instead of just talking about on-budget um, positions in Nigeria alone, we'll now look at on-budget and off-budget and financing for various things in the Nigerian economy. Uh, looking at that, you know, commodities uh, market, the ecosystem, you know, at this time, there is a roadmap, you know, for that. What does it look like? Look, uh, the, the, uh, first of all, I want to thank the, um, the Security and Action Commission for pushing this, and they uh, played a major role also in the ISB because now they've been able to put the regulation of the commodities ecosystem into the ISB now. So effectively now, it means that there is a legal framework and a regulatory framework there in the capital market to regulate the commodities ecosystem. And you must realize that the commodities um, ecosystem is supposed to be like the bedrock of Nigeria. Nigeria is a commodities country in every aspect of it, from the crude oil, it's commodities, from the agri-produce, is commodities, from the solid metals, is commodities in Nigeria. Every aspect is about commodities. It's a blessed country. In Nigeria, we have about 44 different um, bankable um, solid minerals in Nigeria that's distributed all over the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. And we have crude oil. So effectively, what the SEC is trying to do is that let's bring this commodity ecosystem forward. Let us enable it very well. Let us regulate it. People are mining things out of Nigeria without regulations. They are evacuating our um, various um, um, wealth out of Nigeria. Let's regulate it and let's allow capital formation to be able to go into this space so that the private sector can participate and we can mobilize capital towards it and grow that ecosystem. So for me, the, eco the commodities ecosystem does two things. First of all, it generates forex, foreign exchange for any country. There are some countries that focus only on various agri products alone. We have agri, we have solid minerals, we have crude oil. So it's high time that it capital markets now regulates it, 
build it up so that it can be mobilizing capital for us to be able to see how we can, you know, harness these same resources. Now we definitely need that Forex uh, <laughs> a lot at this time. Exactly. But we'll continue the conversation um, right after the break. I still have with me Mr. Akin Akiru Lale, MD, uh, Lagos Commodities and Futures Exchange. Thank you very much. Yeah. Welcome back, and we're still uh, discussing the meeting that happened uh, earlier this week, talking about the first quarter meeting uh, for the securities uh, market. That's for their um, CMC meeting this week. And I still have with me Mr. Aki Akiridulali, MD, uh, Lagos Commodities and Futures Exchange, uh, Futures Thank Exchange you. right here, uh, still with us in the studio. Thank you so much um, for staying on. We're talking about commodities before when you know, on that uh, break, and you were breaking it down, you know, how uh, commodities can actually bring in Forex, you know, into the country. But now let's take a look at how investors are reacting to commodities trading and what you see, you know, going forward. In reality, uh, the commodities ecosystem is, as of now, is a green field. And then, uh, but um, the Securities and Exchange Commission is working hard to move it. And I'm, I'm, I see, like, in the next 18 to 24 months, uh, moving it towards um, a brownfield. Now, the major things that um, investors look at when they're going into anything that has to be investment is how can they exit? Is there liquidity in that um, particular um, ecosystem? Do you have financial structures around um, the instruments that are tradable? Are they de risked? And can they put their money into it? Is it a safe haven? Now, it's only natural that um, for the, in the last 60 years, a lot of investors have, are very, very used to the equities market. And they're also very, very comfortable with the fixed income uh, market because it's well understood them um, already. Now we're bringing in the base rock of any economy. That is the commodities itself that feeds into the manufacturing sector, which now feeds into the service sector, which reflects in the equities market and the fixed income market. So for now, yes, the investors are still watching. But what SEC has done is they've brought out rules to make sure that investors are protected and to remove any systemic risk that could come out of the commodity, um, commodities ecosystem. And having done that, we have, they've approved them, for example, for Lagos Commodity and Futures Exchange, 13 agri products that we can trade in. They've approved one um, solid metal for us, gold, to trade in. We have sent in our application now for them to look at for specification for crude oil and um, um, refined um, products also. Now, if you look at them um, in the agri space, for example, we have cocoa in Nigeria, we have cocoa powder, we have rice, we have paddy, we have so many things uh, in Nigeria. We have taken one, which is paddy rice. And what we've done is that we've built the financial structures around paddy rice and instruments have been issued, which are tradable. So effectively on a, on a, on a commodities exchange, what's supposed to happen is you trade on an instrument that has an underlying, which is the product, uh, which is the commodities um, itself. We've been able to do that to the extent that now in the financial infrastructure, the daily member firms, the stockbroking firms can trade and it can be settled through a normal um, process. When investors see this and they understand this and they know that when they do the, this type of um, investment, it goes through a depository, which is the central security um, client system. There's comfort in that ecosystem and gradually people start bringing products in and start creating products that are tradable on the exchange. So yes, and gradually the investors are coming in. We've seen, at least for at the, at the um, Lagos Community and Futures, actually, we've seen investors that have partook in the um, party rights um, contract up to about $5 billion. And then um, it means that gradually, people will start understanding the markets, start trading more on it, and we'll be able to scale it up from there. And talking about, you know, safe haven assets like gold, we, we know how, you know, the global markets, how, you know, prices there move. Gold is trading about over two thousand dollars. You know how do those prices play into you know um, the trading we have here in Nigeria? You see, for for gold, uh, first of all, I would like to speak about uh, the specification that was, uh, that was issued by the Securities and Exchange Commission. You know, the SEC um, gave um, the specification, which is like the global best uh, practice. You must have a ninety nine point nine 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 percent purity for your gold one, and you must have a particular level of smoothness that should be at the level of the lot of billion markets. Uh, uh, association level. Now, when you have those two in place, it means that you have an investable asset that can, people can invest in because it's like at a global um, power standard. Then the next issue has to do with how do you store it? You know, and uh, SEC has done something for us in the ISB also. Initially, uh, in the ISB, when you talk about um, storage in commodities ecosystem, it was about warehouse for agriculture alone. Now, the ISB allows them um, for vaults to be a warehouse. It allows for tank farms to be 
a warehouse whereby you can issue a warehouse um, receipt. Um, you, I, I hope you, um, you understand what I'm saying. Now, having done that, the next thing is we now benchmark by way of pricing the local gold against the international gold. Because if you don't benchmark it against international pricing, you will create space for arbitrage, whereby people will buy here, they, they will come and buy cheap and sell. All right, so it benchmarks and adjusts on daily basis. And that is done by what we call a two-way quote. A two-way quote allows for a bid and an offer, and then you have someone that's an off take element that creates a market in that particular space. So it's the same thing as whatever, whatever you get in the global space. Because we'll see most of these commodities rally, and I'm sure a lot of Nigerians say, I would love to have you know, bought some of these um, commodities cheaper. But now, with this um, uh, commodities exchange, I guess we'll be able to do that. Going yes, forward. yes, you'll be able to easily now buy, and uh, with the comfort that you know that your investments are safe. And also, there's an exit strategy to the extent that there's liquidity should you want to sell. Those are the things that have been put into play, in place by the commission and the laws that have been issued to the commodities and exchanges. And you can hold for an infinite um, amount of time. For, yeah, for, for, for example... Um, policies for five or ten years. Yeah, for example, we're happy where we had a visit to, to Pencom, you know, because we want, we're looking at how the pension funds also should start investing in gold. Because it's almost like a reserve currency for some, for some people. They've told us to put in um, our reports that they will look at it to see how the pension funds can invest in gold. And in the last 60 years, if there's any, if there's any instrument that has been able to out, you know, outwit any other market, it's been gold in the last 60 years. Yeah. And, and looking at you know, Nigeria's capital market now, we, we do see in the local boss now we're having more of, you know, local players there. Foreign participation has really dropped. What's, what has been um, said there you know, at the meeting you know, to attract you know, foreign investment, but we, although we're, we're happy, we know we have foreign participation, but we also need that foreign participation, don't we? We do need foreign participation uh, also, but you see, the major thing is that um, uh, monies will always um, gravitate towards where there is um, good benefit, you know, and then um, for Nigeria, and everybody can see that um, if the capital market is coming up to play a major role, the foreign direct investors will come in, the foreign portfolio investors will come in. If you... You know, do a throwback to like, um, like um, 12, 15 years ago when um, the banks were supposed to do um, uh, consolidation and all that. Uh, people felt that um, they had difficulty, but the capital market came up and they were able to, you know, rally around and um, support that market. And when the foreign investors see that you guys are participating in your markets very well, they will start coming back into that market. And in the, in the bonds market um, globally now, we have seen renewed interest in address bonds and people are now buying them. Um, investors are not buying. Sooner or later also, they start coming to look at equities. And we've had a lot of inquiries of people that want to participate in the commodity space, a lot more from foreign um, investors that want to participate in that space because a lot of transactions that take place in the global space are commodity-based transactions, especially derivatives. So they'll be looking at how do we go to the source of these um, commodities? How do we trade in that particular space? I guess so much uh, discussed there and so much to be implemented going forward. Well, I want to thank you so much, Mr. Akin Akiridulwale, MD, Lagos Commodities and Futures Exchange. Thank, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, for the NGX, the local boss now, we have uh, some forecasts from analysts. They expect the market to continue its mixed trend as investors look forward to the first quarter earning reports uh, this month, while other investors position ahead of dividend qualification dates for some of the listed companies. And that's the show today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ladi Williams. Bye for now.